Um, the question is, now that we've had the standards around for some time and there's been a lot of review of them, what is the plan for a process to review and edit as might be necessary um, the documents going to, into the future? The sub question to that is, who actually controls the documents? So questions, the, the general topic of the question is governance of the standards. Who owns it is governing this. Um, and related to that, an important question, ongoing, what is the picture of the model, the idea for ongoing refinement and improvement? This, uh, this is an important conversation. If you look at countries like Singapore, you know, they don't just have an elegant mathematical syllabus. They have a functioning feedback loop based on how the students are doing, that allows them to make tweaks as they go. You know, uh, on average, something like every six years, which would be uh, more than we'd be capable of in the short term. But in a fully functioning system, they're going on a roughly six year cycle. And they roll things out uh, in a very carefully planned way. For them. So for example, this year, I think the new kindergarten came out. They're not monkeying with their topic grade matrix anymore. They feel they've got that in very good shape. Now they're working on interactions in the classroom and improving the quality of what's happening in the classroom around those topics. So we have a ways to catch up on all the dimensions of that picture. The, I think that we want to move toward a functioning system of improvement based on student achievement. And that means we have a little bit of a way. We don't have assessments uh, in most states that are key to the standards. We don't know how excellent and aligned the assessments are. So we're going to be gathering data over the next few years. I think that talking too quickly about refining and making changes is therefore to some extent counterproductive. That's not an argument that stands are perfect. I think you can hear some subtext in my talk today of places where I think they could actually improve. Uh, but it is to say that we need to get started and we need people to be able to invest and work uh, while we look for the results and some of the results and look at how implementation is going. You asked a very factual, direct question about you know, who owns this, who governs this. I was in a meeting where we talked about the governance of these standards and it was sort of think tanky, you know, and we talked about different governance models that are out there, how neighbors govern the board, how other nonprofits are governed, how governments are governed. A lot of different models were floated, and for the time being, I, I think the fact of the matter is the standards are owned by uh, the National Governors Association, the National <coughs> Chief State School Officers, and that means that in a, in a dry legal sense, they own the standards and are therefore governing them. I think that they have done a pretty good job of not governing us into disaster. They are letting states add uh, to the standards in places that make sense to the states. Massachusetts made some thoughtful additions to the document. I haven't studied all the state additions. Um, but given that uh, the standards reside with NGA and CCSSO, they are obviously going to be part of any conversation about long-term governance. And I don't think either of those organizations thinks that the situation we're in now is the situation we should be in five years from now. Okay, energetic wave.